Hey everybody, I'm Christopher Green. You're tuning in to AMTV Alternative Media Television. It's, of course, Wednesday, August 6, 2014. And what does the U.S. Treasury know that we don't? Now, there was numerous reports that came out today that largely went under the radar of the mainstream media, the masses, everybody much too caught up with the Ebola scare and you know the potential depopulation control. Not that that isn't real. Not that that isn't a part of this gross destabilization campaign, the psychological warfare being perpetrated by the Obama administration and the mainstream media. But there was another story that I think a lot of people failed to mention and failed to take notice of. But we did here at AMTV because I've been talking about it for years now. The U.S. Treasury had a meeting that was pretty secretive just a couple of days ago on Tuesday. It says the U.S. Treasury looks to hold more cash to deal with future crisis, crises. And again, what does that mean, folks? What does the U.S. Treasury know that we don't? What kind of event are they expecting? What kind of terrorist attack, a potential suitcase bomb, or a nu nuclear event in American City do, do they know about? Maybe it's a technological attack. Maybe it's another flash crash implemented by a rogue nation state or maybe even our own government here in the United States. Maybe it's an accident. Maybe, maybe it's a big fat thumb. Remember how they blamed it on a fat finger post-2008 for a reason that you know, markets crashed on certain days. According to Reuters and several other sources, the U.S. Treasury wants to increase its daily cash holdings, a measure that would help Washington pay its bills during a crisis, a senior official said on Wednesday. So otherwise, speaking, they're, they're raising cash. Suddenly, they're having these secretive emergency meetings. Five years, six years into the so-called recovery. Why would you need to raise cash if, you know, stock market's in an all-time high and things are so great? It's just a gravy train. If adopted, the new policy would help the government in the event of an emergency shutdown, an emergency shutdown. Markets and left Washington unable to borrow money to pay creditors and other obligations. Holding more cash, they say, on hand is a prudent measure, Treasury Assistant Secretary Matt Rutherford said in a news conference. And it kind of makes you wonder, I mean, why do they need to raise cash when they can just print cash out of thin air? I mean, isn't that what quantitative easing is? You just print how many dollars that you, have, you need and you just use it for bailouts and quantitative easing to infinity and then Operation Twist and then you know you use it to buy your own mortgage-backed securities and in your own uh, money market funds, etc. I mean, why do they even need to raise cash when they can just print it? He said the measures would help public finances weather events like the September 11, 2001 terror attacks or 2012 Superstorm Sandy, both of which disrupted Wall Street trading. Washington borrows vast sums in weekly auctions to pay its bills. Investors who met with Treasury officials on Tuesday urged the government to increase its daily cash holdings to around $5 billion. So again, this story continues, very much a mainstream media perspective. But the question we need to ask, and the report begs, why is the U.S. Treasury suddenly so eager to raise cash? Why are they having these very under-the-radar, secretive, type meetings. Why are they getting together on a Tuesday when the market's at an all-time high, baby? We're five, six years into the recovery now, right? Things are great. Why would they need to raise money? What kind of attack are they expecting? What kind of collapse could potentially be on the horizon? You know, Zero Hedge, one of the better websites out there in the blogosphere today, asked the question. They say, why is the U.S. Treasury suddenly concerned about a loss of market access? And they talk about how this is all very chilling. And they actually give us some specific numbers, saying that historically the U.S. Treasury has only had enough cash to withstand a loss of market access for approximately two days. I want you to think about that for a minute. Our U.S. Treasury only has enough cash on hand to outlast some kind of event for two days. Whether or not this is the September or was the September 11, 2001 terror attacks that shut down the markets at that time, or it was Hurricane Sandy, or it's a potential future attack where, God forbid, an American city is nuked and it's lights out. You see, if that actually happened, it would bring down the entire country. The U.S. Treasury wouldn't even need money. I mean, money would be just pointless at that point. And it would largely bring down the entire country, at least in my opinion. I mean, look how we responded to September 11, 2001, creating these gigantic, uh, infinite, large asset bubbles that only crashed, collapsed in 2008, and then created even bigger ones as a reactionary response. <laughs> now, I, I believe, of course, it was all manufactured and it's an engineered event, but whether or not you believe it engineered and have a conspiracy angle on it or not, it's still exactly what's happened. They, they create bubbles, the markets crash, and then they created an even bigger bubble. So why are they trying to build up cash reserves? 
It says the Treasury would have been protected against losing market access for one day, roughly 80% of the time, and they would have been protected against losing market access for five days, less than 10% of the time. And they show us a couple charts here. It goes on and on, and here's a report, considerations for developing the optimal Treasury cash balance. So not only does the U.S. Treasury know something that we don't, we're obviously hiding something. I mean, why the rush to prepare for this? I mean, it's five, six years into what they call a recovery, or recovery theory, rather. Why would they need to raise cash? Why would they be taking precautions? Again, what do they know that we don't? Other reasons for this, in addition to probably just a collapse scenario that they know is on the horizon as a byproduct of destroying the U.S. dollar by printing money into infinity through quantitative easing times a gazillion and then buying all of our market securities and providing all the liquidity in the market while the rest of the world, Russia, China, mostly the BRICS nations and others flee and run for their lives. As we segue into Russia sanctions this week, accelerating the risk to the dollar dominance. Yeah, no shit. You think Vladimir Putin cares if he gets sanctions from President Barack Obama? They're already moving away from the dollar as it is. In fact, he probably prefers it. They probably mock it downing vodka shots with you know his big wigs back in Russia. It's what they're doing anyways. Why do you think the United States has been working to destabilize Ukraine? That's the motive. It's all about U.S. dollar reserve currency status, baby. That's why they've been pushing this agenda. That's why they've been destabilizing regimes. That's why there are sanctions, because Russia and the BRICS nations are moving away from the dollar. Why do you think the U.S. Treasury is trying to raise cash reserves for a potential event? Of course, that they already know about. They're not going to tell you, just like they wouldn't tell you if you know 90% of the global population was about to be wiped out by a new super strain, biological warfare, uh, engineered Ebola virus. They're not going to let you know. They're going to slide right down into their sexy bunkers while the rest of us die, while you tuning in die. They're not going to you know, let you know and hit the panic button. Why would they do that? That would only create chaos before the inevitability. So here we have the U.S. Treasury obviously knowing something that we don't, trying desperately to raise capital in secretive meetings on Tuesday while the mainstream media blows up the Ebola crisis and uh, basically perpetrate psychological warfare on the minds of the American people. And the U.S. Treasury just raising, raising, trying to raise cash behind the scenes says they're suddenly lur- worried about losing market access, worried about a total collapse scenario. Rus- Russian sanctions just being laughed at by Vladimir Putin and the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. I've spoke about this incessantly. I've spoken about this for going on five years now. In fact, here's a report I put out recently. The BRICs don't like the dollar-dominated world economy. And it says, but they're stuck with it. But none of that's true because they're moving away from it. The BRICs nations have already established the equivalent of the International Monetary Fund, which has been Western-dominated, and the World Bank. This is already in process. They are already moving away from the dollar-denominated world reserve currency. This is what it's all about, folks. This is what Ukraine's about. This is what the U.S. destabilization effort in Ukraine is about. Uh, This is the reason why the U.S. Treasury is desperately trying to increase safeguards after printing trillions and trillions of dollars in worthless bailouts to support the super rich and the global elite. Because they know what's coming. They know we're going to all pay the piper. And when I say all, not them, but you and I, the masses, just the regular Johns and Janes on the street, that again paid with trillions of dollars of taxpayer-infused bailouts to the super rich that ride on Learjets. We will all pay the price. And it's why they are holding these secret meetings, desperately trying to raise cash, because they know something's coming that we don't. And your government, folks, would gladly engineer their own terrorist event, their own terrorist attack, their own market blackout, so that they could use it as an excuse and a reason for the largest collapse in history, known to man, that was created and perpetrated entirely by them. Again, problem, reaction, solution. It's the Hegelian dialectic. It's so clear, it's so wide out in the open, blue skies ahead, yet nobody can see. Nobody seems to quite get it. These dark clouds we see over the U.S. Treasury building, all of this building steam, much like the storm, two storms, aggressive storms, about to hit the island state of Hawaii. All of this coming to the United States of America. This is the fall of Rome. I'm Christopher Green. Get it out everywhere. Make it viral hard-hitting it in your face, and click the link below to support our sponsor.